to Collective Couch Conversations, a candid series about leadership and organizational development. I'm Rebecca Ume Crook, and I'm here with Grace. We're going to be talking about storytelling for impact. And rumor has it, what? That you're a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, An honor. Thank you. Yeah. And great stories um, create meaningful change and they have that transformative power. Um, could you tell us what the architecture of a good story is? Oh, wow. Okay. First of all, thank you for that. I think that we are all hardwired for storytelling. So if I'm a good storyteller, that's something that I practice over time to get mm-hmm. better at, but it's also something I think that each of us has. Mm-hmm. Um, and we each have a voice and a u- unique perspective that I think can really help us to do our work better and more joyfully. I think that everything is story grace, mm-hmm. like whether it is a spreadsheet, a budget, a verbal story of us talking, a written story, you know, like a program report is also a story. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I like this word architecture that you use because I actually think there is kind of a, a like guidelines that can support storytelling across all these very different ways yeah. of, of sharing a narrative. So... I created a little thing called PAMS in my head. Okay. That sounds very familiar. PAMS. Okay, Mm -hmm. good. Oh, you've been paying attention. Okay. So here's the deal. PAM stands for purpose, Mm -hmm. audience, message, and structure. So for me, before we start thinking about any type of story, I ask myself, like, why am I telling this. Mm -hmm. What do I want to be true after I tell the story? Do I have an idea of what I want people to feel or think or do? Um, Is my purpose just, you know, getting it off my chest? Like there can be lots of different valid purposes. um, But I think if you want to tell a story effectively, being aware of why you're sharing what you're sharing Mm -hmm. is really important. So the P is for purpose. Then the A is for audience. Mm -hmm. You've got to know who you're talking to and with. Mm -hmm. And I think great storytelling can actually build bridges across lines of difference. And it can help unite people. It can create a common um, vision and direction. It can persuade people. It can help make people think. It can be provocative. Um, But we only get to do that when we are empathizing with our audience if we're kind of cued into like what are they bringing to the table what do they value what are their life experiences Mm -hmm. are they you know are they a board member are they a team member are they a funder um are they a volunteer are they a fellow you know you can have the same message but then package it differently based on your audience Mm -hmm. it's like you might want to code switch things in a way so first be aware of why you're sharing what you're sharing, then be aware of who okay. you're who you're speaking to, and then finally then you can get to your message. Like what's your core takeaway? Yeah. Um, you can think about what when I when this person or this organization walks away from this conversation or sees this budget, like what do I want the headline to be? Once you have those three things, then you can get into structure. And there's lots of different ideas. There's you know, um, you could tell a leadership story of self. You can share a, a public narrative by, you know, Marshall Gantz. Um, there are d- lots of different frameworks for storytelling. You might have a pro forma budget you have to use. You might have to submit a request for funding. You might have to report back on how those funds were used. Yeah. There might be different structures to tell the story. Um, and you can select the best one mm-hmm. based on your purpose, your audience, and your message. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that's where you kind of get to play around. But I have found it difficult to kind of start with a framework if I don't understand. The why. Yeah. And the audience. Exactly. I love that because my next question would have been, 
you were an executive director. That meant you interacted with different stakeholders, like partners, um, yeah. donors. You had the team, the Metis team. Yeah. Um, who else? The board. And I was wondering, like, how do you tailor your messages? But then now it makes sense that I need to understand the why, and I need to know who my audience is, and then what is the message, yeah. and then decide on the structure, yeah. right? Okay, great. I want you to maybe share from the top of your head okay. a story that was told to you. It could be by a Metis team member, or it could be by a Metis fellow, or it could be by any other partner who mm -hmm. felt like your visions are aligned. Um, a story that was told to you that inspired you to act. Oh, really good question. And if it inspired you to act, why? Why? Okay. Um... When we were creating Metis, we went and we interviewed um, hundreds of different education leaders and entrepreneurs around the barriers and enablers to education innovation. Mm -hmm. And there are so many stories from that period of time. But I think for me, so I was a program director at the time at Dignitas. Shout out to Dignitas. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working with a school leader, her name was Teacher Fanis, and she would tell me about how, you know, at, at, how she would get paid 5,000 shillings, which is the equivalent now of about 40 US dollars a month, maybe paid in full, maybe paid in time, most likely not. And she still had a classroom of, you know, 50 to 60 different kids. And just hearing her talk about how hard she worked to be able to ensure those kids had interactive activities, mm -hmm. um, how their how she wanted those their caregivers to be engaged. Yeah. Um, to me, I was like, oh my gosh, you were doing so much. You're thinking so critically about all of these things and so thoughtfully. Um, and she didn't often have like the tools and resources she needed to like to grow her thinking and to grow her impact. And I would go to these different like conferences and there weren't people like teacher Fonis at the table. It wasn't like people like teacher Fonis who were in, um, spaces where they could get the funding and also shape the conversation. And so hearing her story and then realizing where that story wasn't being shared, like really ignited in me to be like, God, we got to support the teacher Fonis's out there to be able to serve kids effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's just like one story that really sparked in me, like, gosh, I want to, I want to do everything I can to help you. And our, our fellows tell these stories all the time about what motivates them, where they come from. There's this man who is amazing from Kajiado. His name is Peter and he, I'm sharing this with his content. You know, he would, he was one of 12 growing up. And his family really struggled to make ends meet. He couldn't go to school. And so what do you do when you're a teenager with nothing to do? Like, he snorted glue because life was so miserable. And he wanted to numb himself out of it. And now he says the reason why he does what he does around youth employability and entrepreneurship is to ensure that no kid is numbing themselves out, that every kid has... Um, spaces where they can feel empowered as agents of change and so like gosh like those stories like that make me be like let's help the Peters of the world who are who are creating an important impact so I think yeah I have so many stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there's the evidence that you're a good storyteller um, well that one I was like on the receiving end yeah and I've learned so much actually from our fellows um and how to tell stories that move people. Because I think that great stories, I mean, yes, there can be a framework, but I think that they are compelling because they're authentic. Great stories, I think, are authentic. They're, um, you know, and God, I, I like he just, there are stories that we tell around a, a fireplace around drinks or something. And then there's stories that we kind of have to then package for other audiences. But I think there's a way to have them be authentic and emotional and then also clear and concise so that mm -hmm. we don't lose 
people. Mm-hmm. But I think that I learn a lot about those things from our fellows. Yeah. And I guess the tip is if you want your story to be clear and concise, is just understand your why and your audience. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, very insightful. Um, so check out the materials. Um, where? <laughs> Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. Check out the materials. Yeah, check out the materials and start telling stories. Yeah, and again, Grace, Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage everyone. This is not just for founders or executive directors. Everyone Mm -hmm. is a storyteller. I told our finance person that you are are a storyteller. When I look at this budget and then I'm going to like send this to our board to approve the budget... Let us tell a story around that. Let's tell about the impact that we can have by allocating resources. We first have to think about, okay, what's my purpose? Okay, why am I making this budget? To make a clear ask for funding to be able to carry out certain activities. What's my audience? Okay, maybe in this case it's the board or my manager um, who I want to approve this funding. What's my message? If you give me this money, then I will be able to do X, Y, Z. Right, And then finally, then you can create a structure. So create a beautiful, clear spreadsheet that has not only the numbers, but maybe even notes for each of those that says, you know, we're having this retreat for 45 fellows who will then da 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 Or when we were doing home learning guides, invest this money, then we'll get these home learning guides out to 100,000 vulnerable families. So there's places where I think no matter what, you think you're doing the most boring thing of creating a spreadsheet, like view it as a story. I have to do funder updates Mm -hmm. um, and I do candid monthly emails and I, and I, I just think about like, how do I tell stories there, but how do I make the whole email a story? I share roses, I share thorns, I share buds, which are emerging possibilities. I have asked. So I think whether it's an email, whether it's a keynote speech, whether it's a pitch proposal, whether it's a budget, if we, my, my offering to our community is, and my hypothesis is, if we can go back to our innate roots as storytellers, then we can be compelling with the work that we do. And I would also say have a bit more fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Yeah. So check out the resources. I feel like we need to redo this. No, we're doing great. Just keep rolling. Yeah. Just say thanks so much, Rebecca. (laughs) (laughs) And we end it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Rebecca, for the nuggets. Make sure to check out the materials attached and start telling impactful stories. Can't wait to hear them.